is from Mohammed Nagogo in India. Oh, right. you know Nagogo. You know, Nina, I know, you know him. him. Yeah. I know Nagogo. Mm-hmm. Na come come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are over. You are finished. This is Kaj, visiting from London, and I'd like to introduce you to a very good friend of mine, Dr. Njakere Damages. <laughs> Welcome to the show. My name is Dr. Damages. We are coming to you from the greatest city in the world. New York! Yes, yes, yes. New York City is so great that Serena Williams Open is taking place right here in the city. Yay! Oh, yeah. The tennis, the, the tennis tournament, which some white people prefer to call the U.S. Open. Is attracting big stars all over the world. Oh, they are all here. They want to see Serena win the final Grand Slam of the year. Are you sure they're there? To they're see her? here. Oh yeah, Oprah. Oprah. Yeah. Oprah was here to watch Serena defeat her sister at the quarterfinal level. Oh. Even the donor, Donald Trump, he was here. Of course. Kim Kardashian stopped whatever it is she does. I don't what? know to take some selfie at the event. Hey. <laughs> now, now who is left? Pope Francis could not be here because um, his visa expired. Oh, wow. really? I know, I know, I know. Really? The man who talks to God on the phone needs a visa to come to America. These Americans are, they are, they are horrible. Yeah. Anyway, Queen Elizabeth of England, she could not come here because she was busy celebrating a landmark. God save the Queen. Yeah, do you guys, are you aware of the landmark? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no, no, no. No, no. Her son, Prince Charles, did not get a job. He, oh. he did not get, he gave up on getting any job. He said he's doing fine just waving at people and cutting ribbons. What, what <laughs> that, he said it's okay with that job. Now, <laughs> the queen this week surpassed her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, what? as the longest reigning monarch in British history. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Elizabeth. Elizabeth was on a visit to Kenya in 1953 when her father, King George VI of England, died. Wow. Immediately, they made her the queen of England. Now, Queen Elizabeth was in Kenya to witness the naming ceremony of uh, mountain gorillas. Do you, have you seen that? No. Oh, it's a wonderful event. Now, this year, as they mark the 63rd year of Elizabeth on the throne, the BBC visited Rwanda to see how the East African mountain gorillas are doing. Here is what the reporters found. Watch. This is a family of 19 mountain gorillas, including a baby that was born and named this year. Oh yeah, oh yeah, obviously. <laughs> that age-long tradition of naming these uh, gorillas, it continues. These white people, these white people are something else. Did you, did, do you doubt me? Listen to the report again, watch. The mountain gorilla, one of our closest living relatives. Wow. This woman, eh, the gorillas may be your close relatives, but they are not mine. No. Are they yours? No. Uh, they are not mine. They are not Africans. No, 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 no. Well, well, well. Reporters in Abuja put that same question to Nigeria's former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, mm. during that his visit to Asorok. Here is his answer. Watch. No, no, you No, no, you He said, come on, folks. Come on, come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Now, now, I agree with Obasanjo. Hmm? Did I just say that? This is actually the first time I ever agree with Thomas Angel. This is the first time. I was shocked. One that shall never end. Anyway, moving away from that ugly topic, South African Parliament this week ejected radical lawmaker Julius Malema from their chambers. Yes, I know you're from South Africa. Yeah. They did so because the young man refused to retract comments he made, accusing South Africa's deputy president of being a murderer. Oh, wow. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He said that he had a role in the killing of striking minors in 2012. Oh, no. Now, now, this is not the first time that Malema has been thrown out. <laughs> Watch. You leave me no choice but to ask you to leave the house. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> you murdered people in Maricana. You kill people. Oh, yeah, yeah. It occurs all the time that he's now known in South Africa as the jazz of South African Parliament. Mm. Wow. <laughs> you remember jazz? Yeah. From Fresh Prince of Ballet. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. L- 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 <laughs> 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 
a lot. <laughs> now, now, talking about throwing people out, oh, no. throwing things out. Last week, President Mohamedou Buhari of Nigeria threw out the culture that elected officials can declare their assets only in secret. Why? Oh, yeah. He and the vice president made their declaration public. Why? Now, now, now. We are waiting for the likes of uh, Bukola Saraki, <laughs> El Rufai, <laughs> Rocha Sokorocha, yeah. even Prophet TB Joshua to do the same thing, to declare their assets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can keep waiting. Now, now that is, that, is, that is the only way modern day Nigerian politician can say to people who elected him that he, he gives a damn. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you don't know how much your governor is worth, my friend, he does not give a damn. Well, 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 in Kaduna State, Senator Shehu Sani has followed Buhari's example by declaring his assets. Hey! Yeah, Shehu Sani declared 22 million naira. What? Two wives. Too much money. And some houses. What? Now, 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 I said, I said, why, Mr. Sani? Why? And why? Two wives? Yeah, why do you have to declare your wives as assets? Exactly. <laughs> yeah? really. If we all have to declare our wives and girlfriends, then Obasanjo and myself, we will need long forms to list them out. I think so, especially you. know, you. yeah, because you know, Aisha, uh, Malinda, uh, Juliet, uh, Binta, Binta, <laughs> Ifi Baby, Ifi Baby, Ifi Baby, Ifi Baby. Ifi baby. Ifi baby. Ifi baby. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, forget about Mudoka. She's uh, her assets are de de depreciated. <laughs> they depreciated. What? Um, they depreciated. I wait, wait. I'm talking about Fumi, Eso, Feose, Ada, Ugo, Ugo, Adugo, uh, Sushi, uh, <laughs> and uh, 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 no, 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 uh, uh, no, 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 no. The big, the big one is Fanta, Fanta, sweet, Fanta. sweet, Fanta Diallo, oh, oh, Fanta Diallo, sweet. You know, I don't mention her on this show because it's secret, but for today I don't care. I'm declaring my assets. Anyway, 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 incidentally, incidentally, that question was also put to Obasanjo during that visit to Asorok. He was asked, will you declare your wives as assets? Look at his answer. No, no, you're. No, no, you're. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Wow. <laughs> but, but, but if you think of it, eh, a wife could be an asset in some special situations. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if the job of wrapping weed is in high demand. Called Ibo? Ibo weed, uh -huh. yeah. If the job of wrapping it for, for people who smoke is uh -huh. in high demand, someone like Ton to Dike will be more than just a wife. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's good at that. She'll be more than a wife. Yeah. Now, now, if the situation warrants someone to sing a song to disperse a crowd, Someone like Patient Jonathan will be more than just a wife. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But, but this one will make it all clear for people who do not get it yet. Imagine that there is a shortage of milk in Nigeria. Oh, no. Definitely a man who is married to Kosi Ojako. Has, the man has something more than a wife at home. The man has an asset. No, did, did I just say an asset? Forget it. Make it two. The man has two assets. <laughs> now, 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 a lot, of, a, lot, a lot has been made about the fact that Buhari declared that he has only seven, no, no, 270 cows. But many of you did not know that each of those cows has a name. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Buhari may not remember his phone number, <laughs> oh. but, but, but surely he remembers the names of his cows. Hey. <laughs> Unfortunately, none of them is named Ayo Fayosha. Hey. <laughs> none! We checked. And, and that, my friends, is a violation of the federal character law. Yeah. In Nigeria of today, even farmers who have only 24 goats, they make sure that they name at least one of them Ayo Fayosha. Hmm. Yeah. How can you not? How, how, how can you not? In fact, in fact, my crack reporters, they said that um, most farmers, they reserve the name Ayo Fire Chef for the most active and vibrant he got. Yes. You know what I mean? Active, vibrant. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to, I want to make sure that I'm not speaking in poetry. I'm talking, okay. Meanwhile, 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 Nigeria's opposition party, the PDP, is struggling to find, regain their mojo. You know, since they lost election, they couldn't regain their mojo. Now, this week, they declared that they will never, never, never hang Buhari's portrait in any of their offices. Wow. 
Now, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand where they're coming from. But, but this is what I said to myself. Okay, okay. Keep Jonathan's portrait and watch and see how it reminds people of the disaster that man was. Yeah. <laughs> Did I say the man? Sorry, I mean the disaster that his administration was. <laughs> now, after refusing to hang Buhari's portrait, the PDP voted to replace Nigeria's flag with Otoke flag until 2019. Have you seen not took a flag? <laughs> now, now, I hope that that cool heads will prevail within the PDP. Otherwise, they may soon make Asari Dokubo their new party chairman. Eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. ah, now, talking about former President Jonathan, did you guys see him at the campaign of uh, Governor Dixon? Uh -huh. Of course. He went there. He, he, the former president came there swinging. Oh. He urged the people of the state to re-elect Dixon for a second time. Watch it. We know they like slavery with the group. And if we go with that spirit, by answer, no more than look. If we allow this is doing it, eight years. Wow. wow. Now, my question is, why didn't he speak Pigeon English uh, when he was president? I don't know. That would have solved half of all his problems. <laughs> Now, for the other half, you will need uh, more than um, just uh, speaking pidgin English. You will need a kind of uh, transplant. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Some things, you know. Anyway, in your morning news, a Senate committee is looking at Nigeria's government's expenditure in the power sector since 1999. This is a probe. They brought the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Power to explain what has been going on. Watch them. The committee was, however, interested in knowing how much the sector had received since 1999. That was why I was wondering. Okay. NIPP alone received about 1.5 trillion. Yes, it's different. Yes. So then, why don't we do the arithmetic so we know the total? Um, the, the, the ministry and NIPP. Are you not surprised? What What Amazing. was the man? What was the man trying to hide, people? Know. What? Watch, watch. So we're talking about almost three trillion, not uh, nine hundred and fifty something billion. Am I right? Yes, that, that will be correct. So can you give us the exact figures now? Okay, sir. Before it's not less than one point five trillion. So okay. So, so if you add that to the nine hundred, so in essence we are saying. Now, now, now. This is your money that they are talking about. They are doing arithmetic right there in the chambers. Look at them. Government has spent uh, two point about six. Because overall, what has been spent would be about two point seven trillion. Two point seven trillion. Yes. So not the one point. Sorry, not the nine hundred and forty-eight billion. Well, I, I just was, wanted to get that clear because NIPP account is uh, an account that <laughs> two point seven four trillion naira. They have spent two point seven four trillion naira on power since 1999. Wow. That is over half of Nigeria's yearly budget. Wow. Imagine, imagine. If they had shared this money to every Nigerian alive today, you all would have been millionaires by now. Millionaires. In fact, in fact, you would have been richer than Buhari. Yeah. <laughs> all of you would have been richer than Buhari. He has only on 13 wow. million. If they had shared the money instead of wasting it in power, no power. Anyway, you know, you know. When you read newspapers, they tell you that the EFCC, the ICP are doing something to stop corruption in Nigeria. You kind of allow yourself to believe them. <laughs> now, the other day, the ICPC organized a lecture to teach lawmakers and explain to them whether goat is the corruption or the yam is the corruption. <laughs> now, Channels TV, God bless them, reported that the provost, oh yeah, the provost of ICPC, fighting corruption in university, read a riot act to lawmakers. Watch. Meanwhile, the provost of the Anti-Corruption Academy, an arm of the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, Professor Shola Akiriade, has read the riot act to legislators across the country. <laughs> I know. I said, I said, what? We have a corruption fighting campus and we have so much corruption in Nigeria? I don't understand. Anyway, watch, watch them again. As done to Nigeria's national development process is most probably unquantifiable. This is despite the. <laughs> now, look at the faces of the lawmakers. Do they look like people who cared about what is being said there? I don't know. This, this one is saying, <laughs> do your thing, let's move on, man. 
Another, this one, this one is saying, we got money to collect. Eh? Hurry up, eh? my friend, too much grammar. <laughs> oh, God. Now, in Boko Haram news, the Nigerian military appears to be making progress in the fight against Boko Haram. Wow. Yeah, the other day, Nigerian army spokesman said, and I quote, instead of Islamic books, we usually find condoms, sex drugs in Boko Haram camps. No, no, it's the headline. Look at the headline now. I'm not, I'm not making it up. It's in the headline. Now, isn't it commendable that these Boko Haram fighters are practicing self-sex? I'm asking you, I'm asking you. Considering their career choice, eh? they don't need to, but... <laughs> now, they probably do not want to die of AIDS. Or maybe they had a meeting, and at the end of the meeting, they said to themselves, you know, Maybe, you know, it is bad enough that we are bastards ourselves. Doctor. Maybe it is better that we don't produce more bastards ah. like us. That, that, may, that may be the... I'm, I'm trying to understand why they do these wow. things, you know? I know, I know. I know what the military was trying to do here. They were trying to paint Boko Haram fighters as bad guys who do not really worship God. Hmm. But I think... No, I don't think... That's not what it is. The same thing can be found in the homes of some of our noisiest pastors. Did I say noises? No, no, I mean our loudest pastors. <laughs> at least, at least we know that a truckload of those things used to be in Bill Cosby's home. Hey. Not anymore, not anymore, I tell you, not anymore. I'm sure that the man has not gotten any in, the, in a long time. <laughs> he hasn't gotten, I'm just saying, I, I don't write these things. They tell me to say it. That's it. I'm just the one who stands here to say, who wrote, who wrote this crap? Who wrote, who wrote those crap? I don't know. Anyway, anyway, this is a segment we call Secrets of Picture. It's based on the premise that a picture is worth more than a thousand words. Woo. Now, the picture you're looking at is that of former Aquaibom State Governor, uh, Governor Babio. <laughs> He's in a hospital in London after he had that accident in Abuja. Hey. Now, now look at the hospital. Eh? If this is London, it must be a backyard hospital hey. owned by some Indian doctors. It cannot be. It is nothing like the first-class hospital Abio built in Akwaibom. Hmm. And why is he wearing this his, uh, street clothes on a hospital ah. bed? Why? <laughs> now, for those who were worried about the man, the man spoke. He told the newspaper that, and I quote, I will rise again. Well, 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 the secret of this picture is that um, if you didn't know that doctors, his doctors just gave him 250 tablets of Viagra, you will misunderstand what he meant. You will misunderstand what he meant when he said I will rise again. He was, he was talking about something else. I don't know how I came up with these things. I don't know how. Oh, definitely, yeah. Now, he was talking about something else. Now, <laughs> here are some stories making headline news across Nigeria this week. Nigeria is built on satanic foundations, Whoa. says oh, Femi yeah. Fane Kayode. Hey. No, 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 no. This, this, look, at, look at how I look at this. The man should know. He has sacrificed dozens of women in that shrine. Yeah. He should know that he, he is part of, you know, he's part of the cult. Hey. <laughs> Civil servants are corrupt and lazy, says President Muhammad Buhari. Hey. I mean, this president said, eh? what is wrong with him? Are they not the qualifications you need to be a civil servant? To be lazy and corrupt? What, what else do you need to... <laughs> Federal government withdraws ex-ministers, governors, diplomatic passports. He took them out. He said, bring it, bring it. You don't need it anymore. Now, 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 now. Let me, let me explain this. They are now free to be arrested in any country of their choice. Wow. You can be in London. <laughs> you are free to say, arrest me now. Four billion naira uncovered in 470 accounts, says El Rufa, yeah, the governor of Kaduna State. He discovered four billion in different accounts. Now, now, mind you, these were accounts that PDP forgot that they were there. <laughs> they would have cleared everything, but they just forgot. There was so much money everywhere, they forgot. <laughs> My administration had a good team, says former president, good Lord Jonathan. No, 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 no. Maybe or maybe not. We don't know. But definitely we know that the administration had a bad head. 
get that? There's no question about that. The head is bad, but the team maybe or maybe not. We don't know. Wow. <laughs> Anti-corruption war, tougher than Boko Haram, says Senator Ndume. You know, you know the guy. The man, the man is saying something important, and I think he should know. He participates in both endeavors, you know, corruption and Boko Haram. <laughs> How America frustrated Jonathan's anti-Boko Haram war. This is wow. what they are saying, that America frustrated Jonathan's effort to fight Boko Haram. Wow. And, and I think it's true. This is what America did. America went and took the money budgeted for arms and put it inside the pocket of Nigerian generals. Wow. Is, is that not what America did? Wow. <laughs> Washington Post declares Buhari the least corrupt leader in Africa. Wow. Now, now, this is, this is wonderful. The same paper called Jonathan, the least damnoxious African leader. Really? Do, do you, have you heard that word before? Damn, he, did, he didn't give a damn. He's the least damnoxious. Ah, <laughs> uh, I know. Dangote cuts cement price to boost consumption, wow. reports Sun newspaper. You know, you know, the last time I consumed cement, my stomach kind of got blocked. But I tell you, but I tell you, any man who can wake up and cut cement price by 300 naira, he can wake up another day and increase it by 1,000. <laughs> that's, that's what we call monopoly. If you, if you, <laughs> yes. All right. The former DSS spokeswoman, Marilyn Oga, has been fired. Wow. You know, she was talking too much. Now they fired her. This is a very big loss for Nigeria. But it's again for ShopRite Security Department. Hey. Now, now they can hire her. Hey. It's time for your email. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for your email. Do we have emails today? Every day, doctor. Ah, you're in uniform today. Good. Why not? I, I think she got you your message. You gave me probation. <laughs> So. She got the message. We had, we had a very important meeting. Yeah. All right. So let's hear the emails. Okay. Our first email is from Mustafa Musa in Borno State. Mm, that's my living friend. Living in Cairo, Egypt. That's my friend. You sure that's still your friend? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We used to drink Kunu. I'm sure. He writes. Yes. Dear Dr. Damages, this is my first email to you, oh. but I watch every single episode of your show. Uh. I have been watching and observing all the emails you get from your followers about who needs to be diagnosed in Nigeria. Governor um, Shetima of Bono State is the one who needs to be diagnosed the most. Wow. There is no develop development change in the state from his first term in office in the May 2011 to date. What? Due to the security challenges in the state, the people of Bono and Nigerian in general, Nigeria in general, do not realize how this man and his team have been stealing our money anyhow. Our deputy governor passed out days ago, mm. and he is still incapable of picking one among over five people from the southern part of the state who want to be the deputy. What? You know, he's waiting for who will pay him more. You have missed out a lot in Borno, but wow. from today, I, you'll be receiving my mail I, every week. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> thank you, my, thank you very much, my friend. You know, I tell you, most emails I receive complain about poor governance in Nigeria. They come from Borno State. Hmm. So, Governor Shetima, I am putting you on notice. Hey. You are filling the hands of your people. Mm -hmm. Behave yourself. I'm glad that Tip O'Neill's idea that it happens in Nigeria too, that all politics is local. In all localities, our people are rising up to demand good governance. And I think there is hope. Right on, brother. <laughs> Next. Our second email is from Omo Wumi in London. Mm, that, that's our friend. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I remember him. You remember mm. him, yeah. He writes, mm. Dear Dr. Damages, first time ever writing. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't mean that he's not our friend because he he's writing for us. Personally. No, wait, wait, you yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> Go on. It's a great show, but please take it easy on our new government. Uh -uh. What they need are our prayers and support. Nigeria is a great nation, and we need to get it right this time. Wow. But it is not going to happen overnight. Mm. We are playing catch up with other African countries, <laughs> such as Namibia, Botswana, and Tanzania. Mm. Who 
people don't even have half our resources, mm. natural and manpower or population. Wow. But through good governance, have managed through resources, mm. no, have managed their resources mm. well, and are better developed than Nigeria mm. since independence. Mm. This is what Baba is aiming to achieve. Okay. On a lighter note, please leave our Adiola alone. Uh, you, know, you know, thank you, my friend. Thank you. Uh, we are because... Our you people are. are. Mm -hmm. And our people are because we are. Mm -hmm. We don't work for no government. Of course eh? not. If the government takes it easy on our people, we will take it easy on the government. Why not? It is their call. You know, we are not here to pray for them. The redeemed Christian church in Nigeria alone, they have more pastors than all the doctors in Africa. What am I saying? They have 10 times more pastors than all the doctors in Africa. <laughs> so it is not lack of people praying that is causing this problem we have. The government neglect of their responsibility. It's not because people are not praying. If you ask me, I think it's this lack of people getting up from their knees to hit the streets and demand change. Hmm. I'm talking to you, the gist. Hey! Now, as, as for Adiola, I, 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 I hmm. am praying. I'm praying for her to remember that Nubiomi Ha Wakakom. You know what I mean? She's now so much of a diva. We are praying that she will remember Nubiomi Ha Wakakom. <laughs> Next! I won't say nothing for that. You but can't say our third email is from <laughs> Mohammed Nagogo in India. Oh, he writes, you know Nagogo. You know I know him. him. Yeah. I know Nagogo. Mm -hmm. Na <laughs> come come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are over. You are finished. I will tell him. Next, next time we talk, I will let him know. Hello, doctor. It has been long enough. Though we often see on Twitter. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Yes, my friend. I have been very busy. I just write today to say hi and ask about what Fashola is really doing. Because I saw a book of his and I heard you talking about a website. Can I actually have some more details of that story, please? I wrote an email last week, hoping I will hear it on the air. But suddenly, 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 I lost hope after seeing your new nurse Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mohammed. You know, you know, you are too much to just is back. So mm. no wahala, nothing spot. Not everybody's happy. Now, oh. now as mm. for Fashola, <laughs> mm. if he's not named minister this month, he will go the way of Latif Jakonde. Hmm. Now, the tragedy of Fashola is the tragedy of us all. Hmm. A one-eyed man is in a country of the blind. Often he thinks that there's no incentive for him to aspire to act like normal people with two <laughs> eyes. Hmm. That's his tragedy. <laughs> Let me step it down one day. <laughs> so, uh, tomorrow, just we get what I'm saying. You know? I get it. You got it? Okay. I got it. So, everybody else should get it. Get out of here. <laughs> if tomorrow, just gets it, everybody else should get it. Next. I'm just saying. I mean, I thought I'm, you know, I'm a doctor. You are a nurse. So, sometimes, you know, when doctors speak, and they, they think at a different level. So, I think. <laughs> Next. <laughs> who are these, these localers? I don't know who are the audience. These people laughing. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Next. our fourth email is from Adeleke Ademola. Oh, Adeleke. Hey, hey. You know, remember Adeleke, you know? Suya, we, I knew him from the <laughs> Suya, Suya spot. Hey, hey. On, uh, at, uh, uh, what was that street again? You remember that street? The, I the forgot one in, the name, the but one. I know what street mm -hmm. they're talking about. Near first mm -hmm, mm -hmm, seventh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, read the email. Mm -hmm. Let's see. He says, mm -hmm. hello, doctor. Mm -hmm. It's nice watching your program every week. Ah. And I'm so addicted to it. Oh. Good work and keep it up. Thank you. Tomato, sorry not to have mentioned your name from the beginning. Please try to reduce that brown teeth laugh. Ah, ah. Sorry, white teeth. Ah, ah. It's not catching me at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Um, okay. you have, should so have, he's your should friend. Have, should have talked to me before writing this. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Okay. I'm coming for you by first tag, right? That's where the street is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, first I'm tag. I'm coming for you. <laughs> Useless. He no. said, He's my he friend. said, however, mm. back to business of the mm. day. That's what we want. Please, business. can you advise Buhari to help those that have finished NYSC for the past four or five years to resume back to where they have served optionally? Ah. If they wish to do so, mm. I think this will help in reducing unemployment rates wow. in Nigeria wow. or in the way around call back to attend different training in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. I think this idea from page 419 <laughs> is in my brain. <laughs> thank you. I, I did look at, thank you so much. Now, now, you Welcome you back. have some good ideas, even Useless. though it's coming from your 419 page. Useless. But as always, it is not lack of ideas. 
that have killed progress in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. No, it is not even lack of willingness to implement the ideas. It's just that those who are supposed to be looking for ideas are busy looking for money to steal. <laughs> so, so it is so sad. <laughs> But, but I, I was told that Buhari's people are watching this show. Hmm. So hopefully they will do something with your idea, you know? And keep opening that page, 419. You, you never know what you see there. Next! Hmm. Hmm. I'll pray for you. Our fifth email is from Abubakar Mohammed in Gombe. Gombe, you know? Gombe. Hmm. I've okay. never been to Gombe, yeah. Neither have I. I've never been there. <laughs> yeah. We should go there. Mm. What did he say? Maybe I'll go by myself. He, he writes, yeah. The Greatest Doctor. Ah. I, with, I await your diagnosis on the workers' retirement benefits since 2011 and the implementation of teachers' promotion in Gombe uh -uh. to see if my allegations are worth a place on your tight schedule. Wow. I do not mind if you combine the uses of the apparatus in your theater and those in the laboratory, Adiola and Co. Uh -uh. Finally, T-Baby. I await to take your hand in, into marriage voluntarily. Uh -uh. If you've proven the conspiracy of your man, Dr. Damages, uh -uh. with my state governor, so that you can, you know, be married to a man of your own. Yeah. Thank you, Abu Bakr. Thank you so much. I understand that some people in Gombe State mm -hmm. are toying with workers' retirement benefits, hmm. as well as implementing mm -hmm. teachers' promotion. Wow. Now, my father was a teacher. And it pains me when I hear people mistreating those poorly paid workers. So sad. Uh, Gombe State uh, Governor, are you looking at me? Are you, we, we are putting you on notice. Now, notice now, now, so. now, not only that we will deploy our crack reporters, we will also wake up the EFCC <laughs> and see if they will remember the sea route to Gombe. Hmm. We, need to, we need to deal with these issues. The governor, are you listening to me? Mm. Good, they got it. I Next, hope, I hope so. They got it. Okay, our sixth email is from Abdullahi Musa in Kano, Nigeria. Ooh, he writes, Kano, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Dr. Damages. I hope you are doing great oh, in yeah. your crew. Oh, yeah. I'm not new in watching and reading Sahara programs, but this is my first email to you, Doctor. What I hope will diagnose to the maximum level is all but about fake and decisive online news, especially um, from scam news mm. and some online blogs. Mm. Please educate Nigerians about scam news. Who own it? I wish Sushi is around to read my email. <laughs> yeah. uh, sushi will come. Ab Abdullah, thank you, thank you oh. so much, Abdullahi, you know, for this mail. <laughs> it is very timely. Hmm. You see, you see, not all stories online are true, including the one that said I'm married to Tomato Joss. That is not true. Now, now, not all blogs online care about the accuracy of their stories. Hmm. Some are owned by shadowy people who are fighting personal wars. Hmm. Scan News is the least of them. There are, are so sure? many. There are so many all over the web. Hmm. Now, their goal is to confuse readers and to make people think that we're all like them. Hmm. The good news is that fake news, like fake hair, <laughs> do not last. I'm not talking about, I'm not looking at somebody. Fake news this like real, fake hair, I it they do not last. Eventually, they will fade away. <laughs> but, but readers, be aware of what you are reading. Hmm. You know, if you see anything that says, I am the next opera or the young opera, be careful. Opera is opera. There's no nest anywhere. <laughs> next! <laughs> I think the show could, should be called Shade Room. The Shade Room, you know? Next! Anyway... Our final email is from Nasir Uma in Kaduna State. He writes, Hi, this is my fifth email, but Tomato Just has not been reading it. <laughs> it's not my fault. I will report you to Baba Buhari ah. because this is also a kind of corruption. What? And you know how Mr. President is fighting against <laughs> corruption. I'm really proud of you guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, my friend. There is a chance that Buhari is coming to New York for mm -hmm. the UN General Assembly mm -hmm. this month. You know? If he comes, we plan to send tomato joss to him. Hey! No, 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 no. No, it's not to do the same kind of thing that Adiola did to Mugabe. No, 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 no. Hey! We, we want tomato joss to go and make Buhari laugh. You know, the man has not laughed in a long time. <laughs> that is just her assignment. I we, that was your job. We, we, we will see how it goes. So stay tuned. Okay? Stay tuned. We are sending tomato joss to him. <laughs> no, don't worry. You're going. Now, I don't... Ah, that's all the time we have for emails. Please keep sending your emails to Dr. Damages at gmail.com and follow us on twitter at dr damages now here's my concern for today it's taken from page 419 of the book 
Innocence Revisited by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Hmm. You know him, a great mm -hmm, author. Mm -hmm. And he says, it is not a slam at you when people are rude. Hmm. It is a slam at the people they have met before. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, deep. Until next week, I'm Dr. Damages. I diagnose. You heal yourself. Woo. Woo. So, we've been uh, getting a lot of videos from people who mm -hmm. are looking for $200. You're giving out $200 to five greatest fans of this show. Mm -hmm. Have you been looking at them? I know how we can do so. Yeah. You can just give me the money. <laughs> And no, I no, write no. them an email. Sahara TV, <laughs> Sahara reporters, their family, their friends, their girlfriends, boyfriends, they are not qualified. Doctor, to, they what? Are not, they are not part of it. What? Now, now, make sure for those who are sent, make sure it's less than a minute. Anything more than less a minute. Less than a minute to. Uh, our judges, we have judges here who I'm are looking at. one of the judges that no, will no, come. No, no, you are not. <laughs> 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 who made you a judge? I'll take it. I'll the take judges, the money. The judges will not even look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you are at the parade. What parade? The West Indian Day Parade. You're asking what parade? What parade? The one that just happened on my... You see? So this is... Oh, okay. the one where they Mama shoot Udoka. people. Mama... <laughs> <laughs> the one where they shoot people. Mama oh, I saw you dancing with that girl, that naked ah, girl. Ooh. I saw the naked girl winding on you. Ooh, it was, it was good. Welcome to Fosby Luxury Hotel. At Fosby Luxury Hotel, we offer excellent service. Our rooms have all the necessary facilities to make your stay comfortable and memorable. You will also have access to internet service, breakfast, 24 hour power supply, poor air condition, free international calls, free tire pumping service, and free car battery charge. So, what are you waiting for? Quickly visit Fosby Luxury Hotel. We are located as number one at the Nirumba Michele off Rajirazaki Road, First Estate, Amuo, or the First Tag For more information or reservation, please call us. 080-75-78-7135 or 080-99-90-0601 You can also take advantage of our online ongoing promo at www.forcevhotel.com to make your reservation and payment for your favorite room which attracts a discount rate. Please note, rooms are reserved based on first come, first serve. Forcevhotel, experience the home of comfort. They come, they come, they come.